Oftentimes in yoga, when we do yoga, we'll hear people say, we'll hear teachers say, jump or step back. We'll also hear people say, when you're in downward dog, you'll hear a teacher give a cue saying, hop to the top of your mat or step, hop or step to the top of your mat. This is an excellent cue and there's nothing wrong with it. The only frustration that I have with it is that it's incorrect, but it's the best verbal cue we can give. In essence, what we actually want to say is use your abdominals to either, you know, get you to the back or get you to the front, which is very difficult to say from a verbal cue perspective because nobody would really understand it. So everyone ends up jumping and we don't want to jump, although when we're starting yoga, it's very important to do that. So one of the ways that we can practice building the core muscles requisite to being able to do that is a position called headstand or shrasana. So when we do headstand, you'll often see people that will jump into it. I recommend against this because you're hacking the pose. The point of the pose is to build the strength around the abdominal region. The other problem with jumping into headstand is that you can jump and you could either fall forward or you could hurt your neck. There's a lot of risks involved. So to summarize, if you jump when you go into headstand, you can A, hurt yourself and B, you're not building the muscles that we're trying to build, which is going to help us with trivial things like doing flows in yoga. So why don't we take a look at what headstand looks like? I'm going to show you first the hand setup. So I like to put my hands like this when I do it and I put them behind me. My neck and position here is actually pretty good for headstand. So you may find that your neck is not really positioned properly. You may need to either bring your hands up or bring your head up either way. There are some, you could YouTube it or look on Google. I unfortunately can't show you because Mine just, my body just kind of works like this. Like if you look at it, it's flush at the top. So it hits the floor really well. You want to stand, you want to make sure that your cervical spine is straight. You want to have a neutral spine at the end of the day. Our goal in this position is to be at a point where we're exerting very little force. So we're not working hard. We're just kind of hanging out at the top. So I'll go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. We're going to come down and then we're going to slowly walk our feet to our head. And as we walk our feet to our head, you'll start to lift up slowly. So another exercise that you can do is going up and down. By going up and down, you build the strength that we're trying to build around our core region with this position. And then on the way down, again, slowly, slowly going down. All right, I'll also show you what it looks like from the side. And if you're doing this at home, you might want to do it really close to a wall. That way, if you fall forward, you won't fall. Another option is if you know how to roll, like if you've ever trained in something like Aikido, you'll just roll out of it naturally. But if you don't know how to roll, you can really get hurt. So be very careful when practicing this. Stand, Shirasana. Now let's look at what we do in downward dog and when we're standing and we need to get down to Chaturanga. 
So I'm going to start off by showing you what I would recommend everyone start off with if you've never done yoga. So it's called the step. It's the safest way. We're also going to show you how to bend your knees. So let's say we're standing at the top of our mat. Our teacher tells us to inhale our arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Now, it's very important when you fold forward, if you have your legs straight, you have to come to 110 degrees before you go into spinal flexion. A lot of people like myself struggle getting to 110 degrees because I feel a lot of tension back here. So when I come here, I can feel my hamstrings right now pulling. There's a lot of tension. And if I bend my back, it's going to really hurt my lumbar region. And tomorrow, I will feel a lot of pain right here in my back. So to circumvent this, I recommend when the teacher says fold forward, you bend your knees. So inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold forward. This way, my back is staying relatively straight and I have an anterior tilt in my pelvis. Then when the teacher says jump or step back, I do a step. So I do a step, step, and downward dog. Then we would do our flow. And then after our flow, your teacher would say jump or step to the top of the mat. Again, we do step, step, keep the knees bent, come to halfway. When you come to halfway, really elongate your body. And then when the teacher says fold forward, again, bend your knees. Inhale, arms up. So what did we just see today? What we saw is some quick hacks in terms of how we can practice yoga safely without hurting our lower back. We saw that we can do steps instead of jumps. And we saw that we can use your sasana or headstand to practice making our core stronger so that we can do the jump part. But you remember what I said earlier I mentioned that it's not really a jump. So what it actually is, is it's more of a lift with your core. Your core is almost pulling your body up. It's a very difficult position to do. So I'm gonna try my best to demonstrate it, going both ways, going back and going forward. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, Chaturanga. So in Chaturanga, I get down 90 degrees, go back, and then I go into an upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Exhale, jump to halfway. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, arms up. So, probably not the best demonstration there. There's other people that can do that a lot better than I can. But essentially, what you wanna do, it's almost like you're coming into a handstand. You are really standing on your hands and you're almost levitating temporarily at a 90 degree angle and then going into downward dog. Oppositely from downward dog, 
you go into a half handstand and then bring your feet down and come halfway. So looks like I have a lot of work to do. I hope you found this insightful. If you have any questions or comments or feedback, please feel free to send them my way. As always, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure and I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much and bye for now.